Securing a new route isn't glamorous, but it's still important work. If our runners can't move since... Pam wants to talk with you. She's in back. Tinker Tom's cooking up... Says Demona. Securing a new route isn't time. glamorous, but it's still important work. If our runners can't move since safely out of the Commonwealth, the whole organization is paralyzed. Happy to help. Keep assisting Randolph's safe house. They've got two more synths in there. I don't want to lose them. About to head out. My safe house kitties need me to make some booms. Data model indicates a 93% chance of another DIA cache being available for exploitation. I can recover it. Location of cache being transmitted to your pip boy. Conversation terminated. I hope to God the Institute doesn't find us here. At least not. something? I need to ask you something. Want me back on deck, huh? 
I gotta admit, things have been pretty quiet without you. Let's go then. I'm all ready to go. And so it goes. Always am, Codsworth. That hey. Mm hmm? You know, I'm having second thoughts on the whole re- I read it all right. Don't tell me what it's- Let's get this show on the road. Hey. You called? miles if I knew there was a pile of caps waiting for me at the end. All this sunlight. I just feel exposed. What's so important? Hey there. There you are. I almost thought you forgot about me. You ready to head out? Damn right I am. Let's move. Still killing people for caps, McCready? I don't know. You still pretending to be anyone but yourself? Heads up. What's up? At least it's not raining.
Split up the loot? <laughs> What's that?
alive. What do you want? Yeah, sure. I'll trade with you. Need to hit the dead drops. Randolph's got a message for you. How do you even fit down there in that? Glad you're with us. About to head out. My safe house kitties need me to make some booms. Contact Dr. Amari. She'll have more details on the route. Deacon's record is the best. You could learn a lot from it. Commencing recurrence analysis using Debrovian method. You can send a runner to the DIA cache. human interface. Well done, agent. Runners will be sent to acquire contents. Reward dispensed. Recalibrating using new data set. I suppose you're here for my medical services. Let's see what's wrong with you today. Could use some supply. I suppose... Uh-huh.
welcome like the stench of urine soaked garbage. Your buddy McGreedy's got a rep here in good name. Well, well, Mr. Valentine, I thought you had forgotten about the Lomi. May have walked out of the den, Irma, but I'd never walk out on you. Hmm. Amari's downstairs, you big flirt. Nick, let's go talk to Amari. Here for Amari? She's downstairs. Irma. Whatever you and Nick are up to, I don't need to know. Just don't let the big metal softy hurt himself, all right? Hey. Good neighbor's crazy. Thefts, murders, worse. Sometimes you just gotta escape a little to make it through the day. <laughs> escape? What do you mean? Reliving old memories. Like Thanksgiving, 2071. Mom made a 12-pound turkey. And then we all listened to the Silver Shroud vs. Captain Cosmos. Even Pa was there. You ever listened to the Silver Shroud? That's what we need. No matter how bleak things got, he saved the day. What can you tell me about the Shroud? He's from the radio shows. I've listened to all 419 episodes. And the holiday special. He's the best. Better than Grognak and Man-to-Man -Man combined. That sounds familiar. You'd remember him if you heard his show. They're the best detective shows in the whole world. What if the Silver Shroud was real? with his black trench coat and gleaming silver submachine gun. I got a plan to bring him to life, so we can fight bad guys and give the rest of us a symbol of something better. What plan? I've built my own custom machine gun, even better than the one in the show. But to make this work, I still need the most important piece, the genuine Silver Shroud costume herself. And they actually got one here in Boston. They made it for the TV show. Will you help? Do you really need the costume? With the gun, I'm just another armed hooligan. But if the Silver Shroud came to life and helped people, it would give everyone hope. As it happens, I already have your costume. There she is, pretty as the posters. The Silver Shroud costume herself. And memorabilia too? You're something else. Together with my gun, Everything's all set. What are you planning next? I'm still working that out. Some details I want to run by you. Well, after you give me the costume, that is. Here you go. After all these years, the Silver Shroud is born again. But there's just one problem. I'm just not Silver Shroud material. I could be Rhett Reinhardt, or, or his butler, Jarvie Blake. But the Shroud is strong, capable. Come on, don't sell yourself short. I got a better idea who should wear it. You up for being a Silver Shroud? You're just like him. Except you probably haven't been in a blimp shot down by mobsters. Why me? No one else would help me find the costume. Even though it sounds crazy, you can't. The whole world's fallen. Fallen hard. We gotta fight to make the place b better. So you in? 
Looks like I get to be the Shroud. The costume and gun are yours. So you patrol good neighbor's streets, and I'll call in any crimes on my radio station. Here... Here's some calling cards, I guess. When you dispatch justice, leave them behind. That way, everyone knows the Silver Shroud has returned. Time to fight crime! Don't let Nick spend too much time with Amari down in that lab of hers. I'll start to get jealous. Dr. Amari? Yes? Wait, I know you. You're on the railroad. What's this all about? This one's all yours, Nick. We need a memory dig, Amari, but it's not gonna be easy. The perp, Kellogg, is already cold on the floor. Are you too mad? Putting aside the fact that you're asking me to defile a corpse, you don't realize that the memory simulators require intact, living brains to function. Please. Nick told me you're the only one who can make this work. This dead brain had inside knowledge of the Institute, Amari. The biggest scientific secret of the Commonwealth. You need this, and so do we. Fine. I'll take a look. But no guarantees. Do you have it with you? Here's what I could find. What's this? This isn't a brain. This is... Wait, that's the hippocampus. And this thing attached to it? A neural interface? Ah, those circuits look awfully familiar. I'm not surprised. From what I've seen, all Institute technology has a similar architecture. Go on, Doctor. Mr. Valentine is an older generation synth. But Institute technology being what it is, a brain implant could fit him, but that's an incredible risk to take. We're talking about wiring something to his brain. Don't worry about me, Amari. I'm well past the warranty date anyway. Just don't damage that brain, you two. I need it. Trust me, Amari's hands are the safest place a brain can be. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Valentine, just sit down. If I start cackling like an old grizzled mercenary, pull me out, okay? Let's see here. I need you to keep talking to me, Mr. Valentine. Any slight change in your cognitive functions could be dire. Are you feeling any different? There's a lot of flashes. I'm static. I, I, I can't make sense of any of it, Doc. That's what I was afraid of. The mnemonic impressions are encoded. It appears the Institute has one last failsafe. There's a lock on the memories in the implant. 
Is Nick gonna be okay? Yes, the connections appear to be stable. Hopefully, it'll be as simple as unplugging the implant once we're done. But that doesn't get around the current problem. The memory encryption is too strong for a single mind. But what if we use two? We load both you and Mr. Valentine into the memory loungers. Run your cognitive functions in parallel. He'll act as a host, while your consciousness drives through whatever memories we can find. Any idea what I'm gonna see in there? I have no clue. But considering we only have a single piece of the medial temporal lobe and not the whole brain, I doubt it'll be cohesive. All right. Let's get started. Just sit down over there, and keep your fingers crossed. See you on the other side. Who are you? Hey, stay back. Hey. The doc said I got some sort of contagious disease or something. I I'm under quarantine. Dr. Amari. Just sit in the memory lounger when you're ready. migration between the transplant and the host. Mnemonic activity coming from the transplant. It's degenerated, but it's there. We're going to load you into the strongest memories we can find. They might not be stable. Just hold on. Can you hear me? The simulation appears to be working, although the memories are quite fragmentary. I'll try to step you through the intact memories and hope we find one that gives us some clue to the Institute's location. There. This is the earliest intact memory I can find. Mom knew how it was. She wasn't soft, but uh, she loved me in, in her way. Remember, you are and she protected me from Dad. As <laughs> this may prove that cost her more than a few beatings. I never knew. Mom knew how it was. She wasn't soft, but uh, she loved me in, in her way. And she protected me from Dad. That cost her more than a few beatings. I never knew what happened to her after I left. I didn't want to know. Not then. I was such a dummy back then. What did I know about how the world worked? I think now she wanted me to kill him. I should have. Instead, I ended up running away. I told myself I wanted to find somewhere out from under the thumb of the NCR and all their rules. But really, I was running from the guilt of not protecting her from Dad. Yeah, it doesn't matter now, though. Dad was either drunk or not around. I guess he must have run with one of the Raider gangs, but I never really knew what he did. Don't know why Mom was with him. Maybe at some point in his life he wasn't a complete asshole. People always hoping for something better. They usually end up with something worse. Mm, what a joke. 
What's it mean, Mom? Nothing, Connie. People like to talk and hope someone else is going to keep them safe. Teacher at school said the NCR would bring back the good old days. Like before the big war. Don't you listen to that twaddle. I'm going to stop singing you if that's what they're teaching you. I'm going out. Where the fuck did you put my boots? Listen to me, Connie. You take this. You're old enough. You're the man of the family now. It's your job to protect us. Your father's useless. But you will turn out like him. You're a good boy. And all that on the radio. All useless talk. The only thing that will protect you in this world is that gun in your hands. You need to learn to use it if you're going to survive. I... I will, Mom. I promise. I won't let you down. You have always been my good boy. This doesn't seem to be what we're looking for. There appears to be another intact memory close to you in temporal sequence. There. Try that one. The thing about happiness is, is, you only know you had it when it's gone. I mean, you, you may think to yourself that you're happy, but uh, you don't really believe it. You focus on that petty bullshit or next job or whatever. It's only looking back by comparison with what comes after that you really understand. That's what happiness felt like. I was the worst thing that ever happened to her. If she'd never met me, she'd have stayed in the hub, maybe hooked up with someone who didn't kill people for a living. Probably been happier than she was with me. Almost certainly lived longer. I thought San Francisco was my chance to start fresh. I was the hot shit, the gunslinger from the hub, rolling into town with the world at my feet. Everybody knew I was the one who'd shot Valdez, and I could write my own ticket to any outfit in town. It all worked out pretty damn well, for a while. Whatever made me think that a guy like me should have a daughter? No, I I never deserved her. Not for one second. It's gonna be fine. You'll see. But we don't know anybody here. And now, with the baby? Come on, Sarah. You gotta give it a chance. I finally got steady work with a good outfit. Nothing like that in the NCR these days. No, I, I'm not saying this is a mistake. I, I'm just... Are you sure these guys know what they're doing? They seem kind of green. I know, but that's where I come in. Just wait. In a few years, I'll be running my own crew. As soon as I make the connections I need. Then I can give you anything you want. And little Mary, too. I never worried about you before. Must be my mama instincts kicking in. <laughs> Who knew I had those, huh? Come on, you're great with her. And you don't need to worry about me. Most of it's just running security for the she. A lot of standing around looking tough. Well, they sure picked the right person for that job. Listen, it's gonna be great here. See this? This is what's gonna keep you and Mary safe. I promise. I know, Connie. I'm sure we're gonna be really happy here. We are. You'll see. That's okay. I got it. Let's keep looking. I'll connect you to the next intact memory.
How did you think this was going to end, Kellogg? <laughs> you thought you could just fuck with us, and we wouldn't fuck with you? Just so you know, I found they another died memory to like dogs. I connect you. And you weren't there to help them. Mind if we sit down? There's always someone who wanted someone else dead. Sometimes just roughed up, but uh, dead was usually what they wanted. Sometimes they thought they could cheat me. That was usually only when I first arrived somewhere. Didn't matter to me. They just took it as part of the job. A little extra thrown in for free. I always got paid in the end. One way or another. There was always a job for someone like me. Didn't matter what it was. Didn't matter who I was supposed to kill. I got pretty good at it. So, I didn't care where I was going. Ended up mostly wandering east. Getting as far away from San Francisco as I could, maybe. I don't remember much from that time. It all kind of blends together. There was almost always a bar, though. That's universal. So, um, I hear you'll take care of people's Problems. Is that right? If you pay me. Oh, we'll pay you. And uh, you'll do this all by yourself? That's right. We pay you when the job's done. Is that okay? That's the way you want to do it? So who do you want dead? Well, it's like this. There's his family. Lives down the creek a ways. Well, we seem to be getting closer. Try this next one. Mr. Kellogg, I'm glad you decided to meet with me. You heard all sorts of rumors about the Institute. But I figured... They were just a convenient boogeyman for anything bad that ever happened. They were real, all right. They didn't know anything about operating on the surface. Relied on their synths for everything. They had the resources I needed. And I had the expertise they needed. Turned into a permanent arrangement. Which suited me just fine. So, you're with the... First synths weren't all that impressive. I'm good, but I'm not that good. But the Institute could always make more, and kept making them better each time. They still give me the creeps, but you have to get used to them if you want to work with the Institute. The Institute? I finally ended up in the Commonwealth. I kind of ran out of road. Plus, I'd come to terms with life. I wasn't going to be stupid enough to get mixed up with caring about other people again. It was just me against the world. And the world had it coming. I wanted to see for myself if you really existed. We do, as you can see. What do you want? It's come to my attention that you've been rather disruptive of our operations lately. This must stop. I do what people pay me to do. If that's a problem for you, I could see only one way out. And what's that, Mr. Kellogg? 
If I'm working for you, there's no more problem. From what I hear, you can afford me. I don't think you fully understand the situation you're in. I think I do. Very well. B-748, initiate. Hmm. Impressive. We may have something to talk about after all. Getting warmer. One of these has got to tell us something. We are running out of brain here. Ah. Uh. Ah, there's one that looks mostly intact. Connecting now. I was now the Institute's main operator in the Commonwealth. If they needed something done, they came to me. It wasn't usual for anybody from the Institute to come along on a mission, so this one stood out. They didn't know then who it was we were grabbing from the vault. Of course, not really. Vault computers are still working. The eggheads never liked taking orders from a dirty, contaminated degenerate like me. But they needed me, and I made sure they knew it. That's good. Checking through the wall. I never knew why we didn't just refreeze the rest of them. But we had our orders. <laughs> I guess the old man didn't want so many loose ends. Too bad he left alive the one person he shouldn't have. Hopefully it's all... I'm glad I didn't have to kill the kid. I'm not saying I haven't done it, but, uh... I never liked to. And yeah... I guess it did remind me of... Uh, her. Yeah, I'm a cold-hearted bastard for sure, but, uh... I'm still human. Better this way, though. Better than taking her kid and leaving her alive. Just... find her. Even then, I knew it was a mistake leaving him alive. I understood that kind of revenge. No one better. But I was cocky enough to assume I could handle some soft, pre-war vault dweller. Even if he somehow got thawed out. At least I know those Institute bastards will soon get what's coming to them, too. If he could take me out, they won't be able to hide from him for long. Pond C6, down the hall near the end. This is the one. Here. Open it. <laughs> is it over? <coughs> Are we okay? Almost. Everything's gonna be fine. Come here. Come here, baby. No, no. I've got him. Let the boy go. I'm only going to tell you once. I'm not giving you son! God damn it. Get the kid out of here. Let's go. At least we still have the backup. Cryogenic sequence reinitialized. What's the holdup? I'm almost finished, Kellogg. I just need to confirm. All right, we're good. I'm, uh, I'm sorry you had to go through that again. I found another intact memory. Whenever you're ready.
Is that your son? This appears to be a very recent moment. Wasn't my idea to settle down with Good the kid happened. in the middle of Diamond City. <laughs> I thought it was a t Wasn't my idea to settle down with the kid in the middle of Diamond City. <laughs> I thought it was a terrible idea, actually. But it was one of the old man's pet projects, so here we were. Me and the kid. Like a happy little family. I ended up kind of liking it. A reminder of what my life might have been if things had turned out differently. This whole setup in Diamond City was part of some elaborate plan of the old man's. Seems obvious now that we were bait for our friend from the vault. Timing couldn't have been an accident. It's not how the old man works. I wonder if he outsmarted me in the end. Another loose end tied up. Since could easily pass as human. Some of them did. But the coursers, they weren't built to blend in. They were killing machines, pure and simple. Smarter, stronger, and faster than almost any real human. I'm just glad they were always on my side. One of these days, you're gonna get your head blown off just barging in here like that. Minimizing my exposure to civilians is a priority. Forget I said anything. So what's the big crisis this time? New orders for you. One of our scientists has left the Institute. Left? As in? He's gone rogue. Name's Dr. Brian Virgil. We know he's hiding somewhere in the glowing sea. Here's his file. Wow. Some heads are gonna roll for this. Capture and return, or just elimination? Elimination. He was working on a highly classified program. No kidding. One of the top bioscience boys? Damn. So, I guess you're taking the kid back with you. Affirmative. Your only mission is to locate and eliminate Virgil. You're taking me home to my father? Yes. Stand next to me and hold still. Okay. It's all over, but the dreaming. X688. Ready to relay with Sean. Bye, Mr. Kellogg. I hope I see you again soon. Now it all makes sense. Nobody's found the entrance to the Institute because there is no entrance. Let me pull you out of there as soon as you're ready. be alarmed, but I honestly don't know what to look for. As I said before, this is uncharted territory, but your neural and physiological readings have returned to normal. From a medical standpoint, you're fine. Are you ready to talk about what happened in there?
I saw Kellogg's life. The man who ruined my family. The man I killed. That's right. He was a human being just like the rest of us. And he had reasons for being what he was, however cruel. How does that make you feel? It... it wasn't all his fault. I can't blame him for everything that happened. If I were a priest, I would say forgiveness is a good thing. We're getting off track. The important thing is that we discovered the Institute's greatest secret, teleportation. The only question is, what do we do now? That scientist Kellogg was supposed to track down. Virgil, we need to find him. You're right. A rogue Institute scientist could answer all kinds of questions. Where did the memory say he was? The glowing sea? That doesn't make sense. No one goes there. Not even if they were desperate. Why? What makes the glowing sea so dangerous? The name says it all. Radiation. So much that nothing there could possibly live. Nothing pleasant. Navigating radioactive hazards is nothing new. But the glowing sea can kill a man in seconds. That's why it doesn't make sense. Virgil fleeing into that hell. The exposure alone. That's why he's there. To make the Institute think twice about following him. That must be it. He's using the radiation and the glowing sea like a shield or a cloak. A way to throw them off and be at an advantage. If Virgil found a way to survive there, you'll have to do the same. If you're going to follow him. How do I fight that much radiation, Doctor? There are chemical compounds. Radex, Radaway. You'd need as much as you could carry. Maybe more. A sealed environment suit would be great if you could find one. Or maybe one of those suits of power armor? That would be perfect. I'll find a way to get through the rads. Don't worry. Good luck. And be safe. By the way, I unplugged Mr. Valentine first. Removed the implant while you were waking up. He's waiting for you upstairs. Who are you? Stay back. Amari. You're the contact H222 was talking about? Just when I thought one person could only experience so much danger in their life. The patient is resting right now. Were you hoping to say goodbye? I don't advise it. He's far past remembering anything about his old life. He doesn't remember anything. I'm very thorough. His new life started in a small homestead near Roxbury. That's all he knows now. While you can talk to him, no amount of coaxing can reverse the process. He won't remember you, and he never will. I didn't get a chance to say goodbye. He talked quite a bit about you before I administered the anesthetic. I'm sorry you didn't have the opportunity. Now, what's your plan for moving him? Can't he just stay here? Out of the question. You people were the ones who explained to me that the railroad is about movement. That's what keeps you alive. Having a recently escaped synth stay too long in one place is a death sentence for all of us. We have to use the original route. There's no other way. That's the plan? I thought you people valued discretion. <sighs> but fine. I won't argue. The Malden Metro Center is where you need to go. All the Gen 1s there need to be gone, understand? All of them. I'm leaving H-222 and his future in your hands. Once he's gone, we never had this conversation. He was never here. Before you leave, take the holotape on the table. It's a personal message for your ears only. Bingo. You're going to read that now? Who 
for you. Stay back. <clears throat> the doc said I got some sort of contagious disease or something. I I'm under quarantine. Dr. Amari. Be careful of the radiation. The glowing sea isn't a place to be caught unprepared. Dr. Amari. You have to find Virgil. A Renegade Institute scientist could finally give us the insights we need. you stay back The memory den's not accepting new clients right now, sweetheart. Irma. Oh, enjoying yourself in good neighbor? It's a heck of a town, ain't it? Hey, Valentine. Hope you got what you were looking for inside my head. <laughs> that was right. I should have killed you when you were on ice. Kellogg? Is that you? What? What are you talking about? You... feeling all right, Nick? Yeah, I'm fine. 
Why? You sounded like Kellogg just then. Did I? Huh. Mari said there might be some mnemonic impressions left over. Anyway, I feel fine, so let's get going. Or I could head back to Diamond City, since you've got company already. We have to head into the Glowing Sea. Any advice? Hmm. I'm a synth, so radiation isn't much of an issue for me, but an old suit of power armor might just be the guardian angel you're looking for. That or you could buy up all the rad X and rad away you can find from any chem dealer who's got it in stock. I'll see you around, Nick. Good luck out there. You know where to find me. Hey. What? What's up? Hey. What do you want? Excuse me. Take this. You're gonna need it. Hey. Well? What's up? I need you to get out of your power armor. No problem. Heads up. Yeah, what is it? Don't ask questions in good name. Go check that out. That of her no. everyone that way. Hey. Nice pip boy. Would you kill to get that, huh? Hey, you heard of University Point? No? Ain't surprising. The Institute wiped the place off the map. That a silver shroud costume? <laughs> hey, ain't no judgments, but heads up need something yep you got it You handle your own. Problems, or you end up dead. Wait. <laughs> we got assigned the same damn job? With all our compartmentalization bullshit, this sort of shit happens. You got the job from the good neighbor side. I got it from Griswold's safe house. How's this sort of thing happen? So Griswold's got trouble, and they send a cryptic note to HQ. Send in the big guns. And on the other side, the doctor's got troubles too. So she sends in her own damn cryptic note. And then comes the comedy. That's the price we pay for security. Don't tell me you buy into that crap. Sheesh. Well, since we're both here, what do you say the two heavies join forces and rock the heavens a little? Been wanting to see you in action with my own eyes. You got any details on the op? They barely told me where the hell I was supposed to go. Let's do this, Glory. You lead the way, my friend.
Hey, Glory.
exit. get lost in places like this. Why can't the bad guys be in one place? Clustered together real tight. Boom. sensors. Nothing more. still there. They were wise to plea.
Hostile sensor reading detected. Let's talk about this some other time. Eh, suit yourself.
Hey. Time to split up the loot? Glory. And Malden is secure. I'll tell Griswold the package is incoming. It's been a goddamn pleasure. Keep it clean, Boston. Please dispose of food waste. Anything else we're supposed to do here? No. Like most ops, it's point and click until nothing's left standing. If everything runs like it's supposed to, our path shouldn't cross again in the field. But knowing how pear-shaped things go, see you around.
sweet. Deacon's record is the best. The route's been clear. H-222 is safe to move. I know. I already got an earful from Glory about Malden. Operational security is worth the occasional crossed wire. Anyway, Amari reports H-222 made it out safely. Anything else I need to do? No. You've bought us time to find a new route out of the memory den. The crisis is over for now. Take this. You've earned it. Desdemona. So you and Glory got assigned the same op. Compartmentalization of intel does have its cost. When running synths out of the wealth, wastelanders can be a bigger problem than even the Institute. The DIA. 
Shit, man. The cash you found has some real serious high tech. But the creme de la creme is ballistic polymer weed. Lightweight, serious stopping power. And it looks just like normal clothes. I got some in stock now. But, oh, give me some time. I got all sorts of ideas. Pam. Analyzing. Solving for theta n when i approaches probability bounds. <laughs> <laughs>